Welcome to Taste of the Club, the podcast for business owners from the Global Business Owners Network of Business Friendship. This is where you get the insights from founders and investors on their career and personal development. Welcome to the Global Business Owners Podcast for a taste of the club. My name is Joel Ball and I am the vice and I'm the president of the Valencia chapter of Global Business Owners. I'm joined on the panel by Maiten Padella, who is also a member of Global Business Owners. And we are also joined by a very special guest, Miguel Angel, who is going to introduce himself very shortly. He is the president of Global Business Owners. Let's first of all encourage our uh, first of all have our panel introduce themselves my 10 thank you john i'm delighted to be here today my name is my Panella. i'm a psychologist and a psychotherapist and i work mainly as a business psychologist so i work very closely to business owners and entrepreneurs and also corporates um but besides that I founded some 15, 20 years ago, a Society for Arts and Culture. So I had the chance to represent artists and besides selling and buying art, to organize exhibitions all around Europe and be in touch with so many members of the art industry. So for me, it was a nice experience that combined the passion with the business and gave me the chance to really understand the challenges that business owners have. Thank you. My turn. So I'll tell you a little bit more about myself. I'm not just the president of uh, Valencia Global Business Owners. I am a trainer and coach in presentation skills and the tools of influence and persuasion. That is my work teaching and training people in business, business service owners all around the world and uh, running trainings, online webinars and all sorts of other events as well. And also being a part of Global Business Owners as an active member who enjoys networking and connecting with other people. Let's also introduce our guest panelist then who is going to come and be our guest and our additional panelist, Miguel. Thank you, John, and thank you, Maiten. As you guys said, I'm Miguel. Uh, I'm a chemical engineer. I'm from Spain. And um, once I finished my studies as a chemical engineer, I started uh, also doing some translations as a freelance translator. And at the same time, I started working uh, in Repsol, the petrochemical company, as sales manager. Uh, Five years uh, down the line, I decided that I had to quit one of those jobs because uh, it was too much for for one person. And uh, I decided to quit Repsol. My mom was not very happy about that because I was uh, starting my own company. But uh, 16 years later, I can say that uh, that was a really good decision. So now I run uh, one document, which is a translations company. And I'm I'm really happy uh, of uh, uh, being uh, an entrepreneur because that gives you lots of uh, freedom and uh, you take lots of responsibility and and, and you can, the the decisions you take uh, can make a change in in many things uh, not only in your company but also in society so uh, I'm, I'm really happy i took that uh, that decision and now uh, since a couple of months i'm also trying to lead uh, dbo and uh, and that is also a, a great challenge but i'm really happy Excellent. And we're we're really happy to have you doing that as well. But let's get things started as well by talking a little bit about what Global Business Owners is about. And I think, Miguel, you are the best person to to give us that introduction to the club. Global Business Owners, or GBO as we want to call it, it's all about business friendship. Uh, That's the um, the key concept around what everything is constructed. We really believe that business is made once you have trust in in the other part. So being all entrepreneurs, the goal that we have is to join in meetings, be it uh, personal meetings or uh, virtual meetings uh, that that now uh, we are forced to, to have. And around those meetings, we like to build trust, to get to know the person you have in front of you to shake hands, 
uh, to exchange opportunities, ideas. And from there, uh, once you have established that connection, that personal connection, we really believe that it is easier to, to go further ahead and, and make business together or uh, be friends or uh, uh, just introduce a, a colleague or, or uh, refer someone to, a, to another partner or uh, whatever, and everything goes smoothly. So that is the key goal of GBO, joining people together, bringing ideas together and bringing opportunities together. Fantastic. And so uh, I'm not only a, a president in the club, I joined the club to be a member. I didn't join as a club president. Uh, I just kind of stuck around and I really love it. And the reason why I love it, um, like many business owners and people in the business world, is that I've been to many, many networking events through my life and generally have hated it. I, I, I mostly hate networking events because it just kind of seems like business card bingo and um, people, you know, it's, it's generally not very memorable. People aren't really there to make connections. They're there to make sales, it feels like, for the most part. And Global Business Owners has a different vibe to it. Like people are there to create relationships to create longer lasting relationships and build and grow and develop with each other help each other out as well and connect with each other on a deeper level and that for me is what you know when i discovered gbo i discovered the networking that i wanted to be doing and wished i had been doing for the for the last 15 years or so does that make sense absolutely yes. and uh, for example in my experience i joined just for a month because we usually do that so you are invited a guest and you joined the club for a month and after a month well i was hooked I, what about I, you tell us your first experience about uh, joining gbo and the feeling of that it, it didn't take me that long it, it didn't take me a one one month <laughs> in fact it was just a matter of, uh, of some hours or uh, or even minutes in the club uh, I was invited by uh, Peter Redbin, who is the founder of uh, GBO. And at first, I was kind of a bit wary of what was that about, uh, because I got an invitation and uh, I was invited to go to Madrid to a call, uh, to, a, uh, to a meeting and uh, a lunch. And I said, well, well, let's give it a try. So I was just exploring what uh, was all that about. And then uh, in the lunch, the, we were like 10 people, all of us entrepreneurs. And I found a, a really amazing atmosphere. Uh, the conversation just started flowing. Uh, you soon started making connections on a personal level with the people around you. And after that f first lunch, uh, when at the end, Peter asked me if I wanted to become a member, I didn't hesitate. I said, yes, I like the concept. I like the idea. And well, after all, what can I lose? The, the membership fee, well, uh, it's just 500 euros. Is, uh, is something yeah. I can live with. So I gave it a try. And, uh, and I think I made the, the right decision because from there, uh, from then on, uh, I discovered lots of very interesting people, not only in, in the local chapter, but also uh, in, in other chapters all around the world. I have friends, I have clients, I am the provider of some other people and I made business with lots of people and I've seen lots of connections, interchanges, business, partnerships being made. So uh, I think it's a great idea. So it, it just hooked me from the very beginning. Yeah, likewise for me. And uh, I really enjoyed, initially, you know, people tend to be a bit nervous when they turn up to a networking event for the first time with like people they've never met before. Not everyone's always super confident in those situations, but um, just sitting down and having a, a chat initially before before going to eat together as a group uh, and having the format explained and getting some ideas about what the club was and the different kinds of people that were there. Um, that to me was intriguing right away but even in my, my very first experience of the club i was meeting 
fascinating people and uh, I, I i love meeting fascinating people and having those conversations and learning things that i sometimes never even heard of before and sometimes even being connected up with opportunities uh, uh, as well as developing relationships into different areas of business that i wouldn't otherwise get connected into or have any awareness of it does give a, a huge amount of, of potential there. One thing that I think is particularly good in terms of the, the club is that it gives people an opportunity to, uh, to introduce themselves to everybody, not just have to do that one-to-one, but then to actually go and have those conversations or the opportunities to, for people to jump in. Um, maybe for, for Miguel, what has been one of your favorite experiences from from being a member of the club or something that stood out for you as being a memorable uh, a memorable experience or connection even? I can't say just one thing, uh, but I can say one thing that happens in every lunch or dinner we have or in every meeting is that I always learn something. Uh, just by listening to other people uh, with lots of experience, with other views, with other kind of background and industries. The club is so rich in the people that, that is a member of the club that, that you just have to sit there and listen. And with that, you learn. And that is very interesting because it's, it's like you get out of, of your comfort zone and you get out of your industry and your business and your employees and your partners and your clients. And then you go to GBO and you start learning. Is is from the moment you you get there, you start listening and interchanging ideas, and that is really enriching. But if Did I have you... to say one 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 uh, anecdote, it's uh, <laughs> I love that meeting in which uh, a new guest uh, was coming for the first time, and then there was a member, and. Uh, at the end of the conversation on the meeting, they uh, told me a couple of weeks after that, that the guest is now the CEO of the company of the other member. Wow. So uh, they just met there and now one is the CEO of the company of the other. So that is the power <laughs> of, of meeting and networking. It's, uh, it's amazing. It never That's incredible. What's going to happen. Yeah, I, I certainly had some some clients come through through the club. But uh, one of the things I think that can be particularly impactful, as you say, is the stuff that you learn. Have Have there been some particular things that you've learned from other members that you've been able to benefit from in your own business? Then I think that everything that you hear from entrepreneurs is uh, is valid for your business. But I could say that looking at the biggest picture of uh, of uh, business is something that uh, that I learned from from GBO uh, that we need to start being so focused in your own bubble and look around. And when you look around, you discover new tools, you discover new ways of doing business, you discover new way of approaching clients, new ways of giving something back to society and employees. And and that is the the most important lesson I learned from, from listening to other entrepreneurs in GBO. Miguel, let me ask you a question and let's go back a little bit about your, your, your own business. So let's put aside a little bit GBO and let's talk a little bit more about you now. Um, you mentioned that uh, you got some clients also from the club and talking about clients, what it is what it would be your ideal client? How do you feel working with different people from all around the world? Tell us a little bit about that. I think that we should have clients as uh, partners, not just someone that purchases a product or a, or a service from you, but a real partner. Uh, if you treat clients or prospects or leads as partners, uh, the benefit for you and for them is much bigger than it. you just see a, a quick opportunity like uh, John mentioned in, that happens in, in those uh, networking events in which uh, you just get lots of cards from people that uh, just want a quick sell. And well, if, if you don't call them back, uh, they never call you. Or if you just show hesitant about their, their uh, business or their uh, services, or whatever, they just lose interest and keep talking to you. 
I don't think we should act like that with our clients or with our prospects. Even if, if you see and you know, because these things, uh, you know, that you are never going to make any business with that client because he is not there to, to buy your services or to buy your product, you should treat him equally. You should try to help. You should try to do whatever is needed so they get what they are looking for. And in the end, I think that that pays off one way or another. So I like to treat my clients like that. For example, I, uh, when I was starting, uh, some of my friends told me, well, those clients that send you just two euros translations, don't do that. Just focus on the ones that send you a 10,000 euros translation. And I said, no, because you never know. You never know what the client can order in the future or who that client might know or what that client can tell about, uh, about you to others. And I've always treated my clients not on a ranking, like these are the top clients and these are, well, the, the peanuts clients that I don't care if they go away. I wanted to keep all of them. And that in the end has proven that I was right in treating them all the same because some of those two euros clients now are my best clients. So uh, you never know. And, and, and one of the things I, I like to, to say about this way of doing business is that in the end, they do the marketing for you because I could say that 70% of my current clients are referrals. Somebody that worked with me as a client referred me to another client or when they left the company, they called me from the new company or whatever. So uh, if you build trust and treat people equally and with respect, that pays off. And that's a client for me. Excellent. It's often said in business that success is about who you have to become in order to, to be successful. Um, who, did, who did you have to become to become successful? What did you have to learn and apply yourself to and develop in your own skill set to, to reach your successes? I think that uh, I had to, to become someone that cares for what he does and to care, who cares for the people that works for him. So uh, I, I had to, to uh, understand that business is not just making money or, or having a successful uh, revenue or company, but in the end is, is trying to, to build something that you can feel proud of. So uh, that is what I wanted to become. And I think that is what I became someone that is proud of building something in which he believes and that looking back, I don't have to regret anything because I think I did the things right. And, and, and maybe I didn't earn all the money I needed to, uh, I, I could have, or maybe I don't have a, the biggest company in the world, but it th doesn't matter. Uh, I can say that I'm happy with, uh, about what I did. And that's the most important. Yeah, great. And if, so, if somebody wanted to replicate your success in your area of business, what, what in addition to that would be the skills that they would need to focus on and to be able to develop that? It's not about the skills you have. It's about the attitude you have. Uh, of course, you need a set of skills to do certain things. You cannot be a translator if you don't have a technical knowledge and, and a language knowledge. But it's the attitude towards the work that you, the work that you have to, to perform and the passion you put in it that really sets you apart from, from your competitors. So I would recommend to anyone starting a business to give everything you have. And don't keep anything uh, to you. Don't uh, ever stop trying new things and don't ever let anything kill your passion. If you work without passion, I think you are dead or you will be dead soon. But if you want to keep your business running and, and keep growing and being successful, keep the passion in what you do. Wow, that speaks high volume values, right, John? It is like Absolutely. 
it is a, a really important part of any business, the core values of yeah, the man, I, CEO and the business. And I think it's, it's, it's not just talking, it's, it's something that, that we often hear uh, here and then, and it's really important because we are all humans and we are not treating with companies. What is a company? A company is nothing. A company is a group of people. And when you treat people, uh, when you have a connection with them, you, all these things uh, play a part because we are all humans and we feel uh, attitudes. We feel the, the we have a feeling of what they are looking for. We have a feeling of the other person in front of you what are their objectives, their target? Is he uh, trustful, is he not? And, and, and that is also business. Business is not just having a good product and having a good service. It's, it's all about relations. And uh, you have to take these things into your skill set, so to speak. So in the end, we are all, we're all persons and, and you have to bear that in mind. Yeah, I think that the person who focuses on getting the sales, it, it maybe will get the sales, but the person who focuses on long-term business relationships will be the person who gets lifetime value from their customers and their, and their relationships and being of service. So it's a, it's a, a it. huge difference. That's it. Yeah. And, and, and many times you, you hear people being worried about uh, selling at a sale, as a loss or uh, something like that. Maybe you have to do it. Maybe it's not just uh, winning every single battle. It's winning the war, so to speak. So maybe sometimes you have to do little steps that you can think, well, this has any value, or um, I'm losing money here, or, or yeah. this is not profitable at all. Of I'm taking ten hours on this client, and maybe he never comes uh, comes back. But all that plays a, a part. There's, there's a lot going on in the world right now and uh, a lot of people having to make some changes in their business. Uh, are things with COVID-19, is it affecting your business? Uh, and if so, what, what kind of action have you been taking in face of that? Obviously, everything is affected by COVID in one way or another. Uh, but uh, in terms of the translations industry, it hasn't been uh, really badly hit. Uh, there are several factors uh, that play uh, into that. One of them is that most companies have already done the transition into the digital world. Uh, of course, there are big players who have big uh, offices and lots of staff there. But normally, uh, a translations company doesn't need uh, that present. It's, it's not a shop that someone has to go there to order a translation. Everything is online. Everything is in the cloud. So in that sense, we didn't have to adapt or ways to, to the new situation. But it is true that some clients uh, have been affected. Uh, many industries have been very hardly hit. And uh, of course, if those were your clients, those clients are gone or, or the volumes are getting very, very uh, low. Right. And especially for us, uh, we have clients in the tourism industry and, and those are gone for now. And um, apart from that, we have many industries uh, that, uh, that sends uh, translations because you know every industry needs translations if, the, if they are working in, in, an inter in an international market. And in the end, somehow they compensate. So more or less business stays the same. And our biggest concern now is that the crisis that is going to follow, the financial crisis and all the unemployment and all the, the credit crunch and all that may mean that we start having difficulties and people don't get in uh, and people start uh, stopping to pay or something like that. And that can bring problems down the line, so to speak. But so far we are, we're okay. That's, That's good to good. hear. We are listening some um, children in the yes. background. <laughs> this is one of the consequences of COVID, you know. <laughs> That's lovely. Let us know a little bit about you, your family, your personal life, and how do you combine 
this personal life with your business? The good part of being an entrepreneur is that in the end you're on you're your own boss and you can uh, kind of schedule things to, to make them uh, fit <laughs> to, your, to your personal life. I have two small kids, I'm married, and, and I live in a, in a small town. It's just uh, over 1,000 uh, people living here. I'm close to Madrid, which is a big city, so that makes it easy to make business too. But I have both things. I have the, the good things of uh, being in a small town and the good things of, uh, of the big city. And what I always try to do is to, to have certain order in, in, in what I do, certain schedules, and try to give time to all aspects, all, uh, all spheres in, in your life. So uh, I always try to combine Uh, taking care of my kids because I take them to school, I make uh, lunch for them, I take them to uh, activities after school and so on. And and I combine that with working, with sports, with I love, and with uh, my wife and family and friends. So uh, w when you are the boss, you have to, to be very organized. If you don't... Uh, don't put a schedule in your life and you just let things happen, they get out of control. But the best, the best way of doing this, in my opinion, is to, to have clear, clear uh, separate spheres. Like from this time to this time, I'm going to work and I'm going to work. And mm -hmm. if I have to do sport, I have to do sport because that is also good for me. And if I have to take care of the children, I have to take care of the children. But you have to know that. You have to, to know when and, and how to do that. What, what, are your, what are your passions then? What are the things that, that you most love to do outside of business? Uh, I'm a very social uh, person and I love to be with friends and family to hang out and, and, and just have uh, a drink and, and have long conversations. Some of my friends say that I speak a lot <laughs> and, and <laughs> that sometimes I, I just should be quiet and listen to others. And, uh, but, but it's because I'm, I'm like that. I'm outgoing and I want to, to, to share things, uh, everything that, share, that, that can be shared with others. I, I love to do that. And I love sports and nature. So I try to combine that with, uh, with the perfect sport to do that, which is mountain biking. And that allows me to, to be in a good shape and also be in nature. And as I'm in a town, I have... The mountains uh, nearby and everything is clean and, and not polluted by any kind of noise or uh, or uh, or pollutant or whatever and and that is uh, what keeps me alive too. great so now that some of the restrictions are lifting you can get back out on your bike properly again yes i'm looking forward to it tomorrow <laughs> at seven <laughs> marked in my agenda in that agenda that I, that you have to keep That is marked in red tomorrow. Champing at the bit, I'm sure. I hate to change the subject, but I'm very curious about, uh, well, this is my nature to ask maybe odd questions, but what about the challenges that you had to face, not necessarily now and due to the COVID-19, but in the past, uh, in your business or in your private life? And... How did, you, um, how did you manage those challenges then? And how would you do it if you could face them again now? The biggest challenges I found in my personal life and in business, because I think they are really connected, is treating with people. You never know what is going to happen, or at least I never know what is going to happen. Uh, When you have a personal issue with someone or someone has a personal issue with you or someone has a personal issue that you need to address, uh, that is the, the most complicated things for me. Well, maybe it's because I'm, I'm an engineer, I'm, I'm, I'm a man of, of, of science, so to speak. And uh, when you sum two plus two is always four. But when it comes to people, it's, it's completely different. And Managing teams, when I started to manage teams and to uh, organize tasks and, and to 
have to deal with uh, with personal uh, feelings and 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 interests. That is the the most challenging thing I I have to do. I have to do, and I will have to. When I started taking care of GBO, that went up exponentially because it's, it's not that you have employees. Right. Is that you have members and you have to take care of those members, and every member is different. What you can apply to one, you can't apply to the other. There's no, there's no a template that you can say, okay, I, I have this template, everything is solved. I designed this, and now it will run smoothly. No, every time is different, and, and it is also very enriching, but it's very tough. And uh, and sometimes I, I honestly don't know what to do and, and how can I solve that uh, a, a certain situation. Yeah. In the end, it's, it's it's another person who you have to take care of, and that is that is very hard because your decisions can affect in many ways. So. Of course, I think every business owner has uh, felt like that uh, at least once or twice a day. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Tell me about it. <laughs> Absolutely. For what, what what sort of size is your own company then, and how does that compare to uh, to maybe the the size of uh, GBO? The size of the company is uh, is a small business or medium sized mid business, and um, in in the translations industry there there are lots of uh, of companies like this. Uh, there are just two or three very big multinationals, and then there's a myriad of of other small uh, companies like boutique translations company that uh, take care of uh, of translating um, the specialized and maybe in one industry or maybe in one language pair or things like that. What we did from the beginning is to specialize in life sciences. And uh, now we are also working outside that, but our main focus is still there. So, when you specialize in, in a certain niche, uh, I think the chances are that if, if you're not in tourism, for example, now, which uh, obviously is heavily impacted, but if the, yeah. if the industry goes well, if you're specialized in that and, and do not cover everything and, and grow too fast and try to uh, do everything uh, that you could do, um, I think the result is, uh, is much better because you, you have built a certain expertise over the years that that helps you overcome all difficulties right now i think a lot of people are are wondering what to do and where to go and that that are aware that there may be some challenges ahead still that we may may not have even really seen uh, the worst of it there's going to be some uh, economic uh, challenges and perhaps global economic challenges as well and so we we can't uh, we can't control that, but we can control what we do about it. But and this isn't not just for you, but for all of us on on the panel here as well. What what you would advise people to be thinking about or taking action on right now to position themselves for where there there's still going to be opportunity and there's still going to be uh, ways forward and ways for growth and development. A crisis is always an opportunity. Uh... It, it's it's always damaging, of course. It is always uh, threatening, and uh, it can just simply finish your uh, your company or uh, finish your economy. But in this in these uh, situations is where you have to stop, think, and and take that opportunity that the crisis brings, and position yourself for the future. So I would recommend everyone to. Now that we are all kind of slow, so to speak, because we can't do all the things that we should do or that we used to do in the past, take some time to think about all the things you were doing, why you were doing it, and if you want to keep doing them in the, in the future. Maybe you now discover that certain things didn't matter and that you shouldn't do them uh, moving forward. And maybe you learn from, from all the entrepreneurs and from other companies situation, what has to be done or what you could do to, to, to make your, your world change, so to speak, and be more ready for, for what comes.
even if we don't know what is coming. I think for some for some people, perhaps this has been an opportunity to realise that they want to make some changes and do some things differently. Yeah. Maiten, what are your thoughts? Well, I think that particularly in this in this situation, it is a fantastic opportunity to to, as I always say, to stop and think and think about the past to learn things from the past, but really, really concentrate on the future. Ask ourselves what, if we are willing to continue doing the things in the way we did it till now, uh, if we are going to change that and how, and how in a very realistic way, is this possible, it is not possible, and if it is not possible, how to uh, adapt and change things to, to make it possible anyway. And um, talking about this and talking about possibilities, is there is something that you wish you had known in the past before beginning your own business that you think that might help you in the past and how does compare with the future that we might think that we're going to have? I think that um, the more you, you know people and, and you know different ways of doing things, you're better prepared for the future. So uh, I don't know if, if there is something that I, uh, a particular thing that I would have known in the past that would have made me done things differently. Getting to know the, the long-term strategies, looking in, in the long-term is the, the most important thing that I have learned uh, during the years. Maybe when you start, you just, are too short-term focused and trying to uh, to make your first bucks, so to speak, and to survive and to start building something, and 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 sometimes that can lead you to forget uh, your long-term goal. And o- over the time, I have learned uh, that if you have a clear point where you want to get to, it's easiest to get there than if you just keep the ball rolling to see what happens. And and it, also, if you have a clear goal, you can be better prepared to, to overcome crises like this one. Because you can always have a plan or, or two or three plans, alternatives. If this happens, I will do this. If this happens, I will do that. And, and, and that maybe when, when you're young and unexperienced is something that you don't have in mind. Maybe, maybe you do, but in my case, it wasn't, it wasn't yeah. that clear. So maybe that's the the most important thing that I would have loved to, to know in the past. What, what's been the best thing about the lockdown for you? There's always have to be something good about, about it. Always. Always. Uh, maybe I got even more connected with, with my friends and my family because you felt like, like somewhat, somehow uh, forced to... to call that friend that you maybe uh, didn't talk to in, in the last two years, but now, well, you're in lockdown. He's in lockdown. So, uh, well, we have to make a call. So yeah. I think that, that everything has been more close in, in, in our relationship with others, not only, not only uh, friends or, or family, but also with clients and with providers. Uh, I think we, we felt that urge to, to connect uh, with people because being in a lockdown is, is very, <laughs> it's very bad. It's very lonely. And, and sometimes you just feel the need that you need to, to see a face, even if it's in a computer. So I think that's, that's the best thing. If it yeah. has G- GPO has risen to that challenge, right? I yeah. mean, uh, it's been, for, for some of us, maybe a bit of a lifeline as well that uh, we've been able to connect with not only our own sort of clubs and regions, but the whole global network has been able to come together and have new industry groups and have a global yeah. meeting as well. So we're connecting with members that we might otherwise not only ever meet at some of the international events and that we're going to keep the some of the online elements going after after lockdown as well because there has been value there so there have been opportunities that have come up through this that that perhaps maybe they were there before but not everyone was not everyone was in that environment and now that people are moving shifting so much to digital environments that uh, we have 
more ways to connect and uh, i don't think it's going to go back to business as usual i think it's going to be a a, a new usual uh, i hate yeah. to say the new normal because everyone's kind of saying that but but it is going to be a, a new version of things and you know, more, more people on zoom now than ever before and other sort of online channels i think it's going to be yeah. really interesting to see see where all of that goes Yes. Absolutely. The new normal, as they like to call it, is knocking at the door right now. So we need to be prepared for that. And talking about uh, prices and all that stuff, Miguel, yeah. what do you think about this life work balance that many talk about? And uh, you have, I mean, no, not, I, I'm sure that you have read a lot of uh, blog posts and uh, maybe also listen to other podcasts talking about this. What is your take on that? That is really a thing. Does it exist? Is it possible? It is something that it is attainable in the real life or not? Um, are you specific asking for entrepreneurs or for employees too? I mean, or for uh, humans? For everybody and your own experience. I'm interested in your own experience about this. It's, it's always hard to have a balance between life and business. I think it comes back to what I said about schedules. Uh, you have to have a clear line between work and life because otherwise it's always easy uh, more for entrepreneurs to just work because it's always there. It's so easy. Uh, I don't have to go to the office. I, I myself work from home. So, uh, my house is my office and my phone is my work. So yeah. you're always you're always one click away or one tap away from work. But uh, the same that happens with sport, for example, that you need to set aside a, a time for sport because you need it or you want to do it. You have to have your life and that can interfere with your... Uh, with your work and and uh, and vice versa, so you have to keep everything separate. The moment you just don't have a clear line, at least in your head, and and in your ways of doing uh, things, between what is life, personal life, so to speak, and what is work, you can be just like this all day. Uh, I have a phone call. I have an email that I have to answer, and uh, and that of course is not. It's not good for you, but it's not good for the ones around you because they don't want to talk to uh, to your hair, so to speak. <laughs> they want to talk to you. And, and healthy boundaries, right? That's right. And 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 I think that is also a, a sign of respect to to the to the others. If I'm talking to John or to Maiten and thinking about other things, or or I have the phone in my in my hand and I just pick at it. Uh, slightly because I'm waiting for an, for an email or, or if my WhatsApp just beeps and, and I feel tempted to have a look uh, about what can that be. That is not respectful with the one you have in front of you because you have to, to give them full attention yeah, at least for the 10 minutes that you are going to talk to them. I'd say that's about being present with people, right? It's about yeah. really being there in the moment with them, like like we are now here on this call. It's it's super important. Is I like, I don't think the the amount of time you get to spend with certain people or doing certain things is nearly as important as being fully present in those moments in your life. And uh, I think the greatest gift you can give in any relationship, work or uh, at home is is the gift of presence. So I love so I love what you're saying there. I really I really relate to that. Absolutely, we psychologists like to call that contact, which is not the physical contact. It's the real contact, and the contact happens through a camera, uh, live in any situation on the phone when you are fully fully present. Yeah. Like as as you said, John. And, and and that is hard. It's hard to do it and it's hard to find because uh, I would say that these days with all the technology around us and all, with all the stress and rush, well, that we used yeah. to have, I don't know if we are going back to that again, but, but all that busy life that we have uh, been, our, been put ourselves to, to leave because we are so busy, uh, I think that sometimes prevents us from that contact that you mentioned, from being just focused in one thing 
And even if it's five minutes, I'm going to be five minutes with Maiten and forget about the world. I'm going to be three minutes with John and nothing else matters. It's just you. And I give you these three uh, minutes because you give them to me too. And, and, and in those minutes we have, it's just us. Well, what's the, what's the best book you've ever read relating to business that has helped you that you would recommend to other people? I don't know the name in English because I, I read it in Spanish, but it can be something like, where's my cheese? Something like that. Who moved my cheese? It's called. Who moved my yes. cheese? That's right. <laughs> and, and I really love that one because what, it was one of the first uh, business books that I read. And I remember that I read it uh, during a, a trip to, uh, to Thailand uh, that I had to, to be there once uh, when I was in Repsol because I was selling dye stuff for leather and, and, and I had to go to a trip. And I read it during, the, during that trip in the plane and in the hotel and in the plane back. And it taught me about change and how things can, can dramatically change from one day to another, like we are living now. And when somebody moves your cheese, you have to be ready. There's a shock, there's a trauma, but you have to re be ready to move on. And as I said before, if you, if you had that goal, long-term goal, and you have thought about different ways of getting there, it is easier to, to change when somebody moves that cheese. So I really love that. Oh, food for thought. <laughs> Absolutely. It's always, uh, I, I find one of the things I do a lot in meetings, I, I read a ton of books and I always, when I start talking to them about people, always start getting asked for recommendations and things like that. So I love getting other people's uh, recommendations for the business books that have, uh, have meant a lot to them and mattered to them. Fantastic stuff. If there's one thing that you would hope that people would do after, after listening to us chatting today, what, what would it be? I would like... And I would recommend every entrepreneur to, to get to know others. And what I mean get to know is really get to know other people, like uh, doing this contact that we uh, spoke about recently and what we are doing now. Uh, have the time to, to meet people and to build trust, to, to get to know who's the person behind the client or who's the person behind the provider or who's the person behind the employee. Try to establish that connection. And when you cross that border and, 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 and move from the job title to the person, you start to learn lots of things. And, and I think that is really enriching and, and I would recommend that for sure. Absolutely. That's uh, some, some nice thoughts to, to wrap things up on today, I think. And uh, I think I can, we can all agree business is better with friends, right? Really. Yeah, really. Everything is better with friends. <laughs> Everything's better with friends. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. It's the perfect time and it's the perfect conclusion. I think that it was th these last words that, that Miguel said were really deep and really important. And uh, a lot of things to think about after this podcast, which I like a lot. You should always have something to take away. If you're going to invest some time in listening to a, a business-based conversation and getting to know people, invest, invest the time in it. And uh, don't just let that be wasted time. Do something with what you've heard today, even if it's just um, checking out some networking possibilities with global business owners or other places as well and within your own network. It's, uh, take, take some action. If you heard something or you want to check out, like we talked about a book that was really good, maybe go and check that out but take action on the things that you hear and that you're learning and and keep things moving momentum is a very powerful force in business yeah. absolutely and let us know your questions your thoughts share with us it is important it yeah is important. we want to hear we want to hear from from people who are listening to it what they get from the podcast what they like uh, feedback on the format this is going to be this this is for for people listening as, as much as more than it is for us uh, we're here because we we enjoy this we enjoy connecting and networking but uh, you, it's the feedback it's your feedback that's going to help us grow and develop and make this podcast into something that's really worth listening into how did you feel about the whole thing did you like it did you enjoy it Yes, I really did. I really did. It was nice. And uh, I really appreciate the time uh, together. 
and, and, and it was really, really nice. We, we really appreciate you giving us your time, Miguel. So thank you for, for joining us today. It's been a real joy to, to speak with you. We've got some insights. I've got some stuff to take away and think about. I, I realize I haven't read Who Moved My Cheese ever, so I'm going to go and take a look at that. Add it to my ever-growing list of book recommendations. And uh, it just makes me to thank thank, uh, thank you, thank Maiten for joining us as well, to, to thank Richard, who's here in spirit at least, and to, to say that we'll see you on our next episode. Are you a game changer, a startup founder, a high impact investor, entrepreneurial minded, a business owner with a global mindset? Welcome to the world of global business owners. I'm Richard, global president of GBO. We are a rapidly expanding international business networking club with established chapters in 24 cities and more than 650 members worldwide. Among our esteemed members are many accomplished business owners, which include partners of prodigious law firms, founders of high-tech startups, elite yacht brokers and experienced investors, to name a few. We created GBO to help people like you facilitate lifelong business friendships to give leaders a platform to share knowledge to allow for the open discussion of ideas and to create business opportunities for GBO members around the world. Experience a different kind of business network, one that doesn't come with strict membership rules or expensive club fees. GBO offers a relaxed social environment that connects people with knowledge, knowledge with ideas, and ideas with opportunities. We invite you to join us in building a significant global business network with the goal to forge a community of 50,000 global members in 500 city chapters all around the world as GBO becomes a key community in the global business environment. Begin your journey today and join us as an honored guest at one of the next local chapter meetings in your city to experience the spirit and philosophy of GBO. Simply complete the guest request form on our website and one of our dedicated guest managers will be in contact with you to assist you in booking a guest seat and to answer any questions. I hope to see you at the next GBO event. Welcome to GBO. Welcome by GBO. Bienvenido a GBO. Welcome to GBO. Welcome by GBO. Welcome to GBO.